Lactate testing, the pro training tool that most top level riders use to their advantage. And if it works for the pros, is it something that any rider should use to improve their performance? It's time to dive in and find out if this could be cycling's next big thing. The common myth is that lactate is bad, a wasteful byproduct of intense efforts that causes that muscle soreness and intense burning sensation in our legs. The reality, though, is different. It's actually something our bodies use for fuel and energy. Lactate is produced when our bodies break down carbohydrates for energy. The burn in your legs is actually thought to be the hydrogen ions, which build up via that same process, causing that unpleasant feeling we know all too well. As exercise intensity increases, a greater proportion of energy is generated from carbohydrates, leading to a higher production rate of lactate. Basically, the harder we ride, the higher our lactate levels will rise. So during really intense anaerobic efforts, we simply can't take on enough oxygen to use in that aerobic metabolism, and levels of lactate begin to rise in our blood and our muscles. Lactate levels rise exponentially as you reach that point when you simply can't go on anymore and you have to rein that effort in and reduce your effort. And understanding your own lactate data is useful because it allows you to pinpoint exactly where your aerobic systems begin to stop that sort of effort, that sweet spot, zone three style effort stops, and your anaerobic ones really begin. More on why that's important a bit later. Understanding how we can improve our aerobic and our anaerobic system is key to improve performance. Those of you who are familiar with training with power will attest to the fact that using your power profile, training zones, FTP tests, they're all a really good approximation of how hard you need to train for certain durations to achieve your training goals. Making sure you don't train too hard or you train hard enough to really hit the numbers and the performance that you need to do at that particular time. What lactate testing does though is unlock greater insight into what's going on in your body. By measuring your lactate levels across different effort levels, you're looking at what happens at a cellular level in your body, rather than relying on a power test, which you may have done weeks before at a time when your motivation may have been different, you may have had sleep impacting that test, and lactate testing takes away that guesswork by looking at really what's going on under the hood, meaning that you can train at the exact right intensity at the right time, no matter the goal of your session. This is why it's been used so extensively by the pros in recent years. But what's been potentially a game changer is the fact that you no longer have to do this in the lab. Now you get devices such as this one, fits in your pocket while you're riding. So it's quite easy to do a lactate test out on the road. Use a lancelet to get a drop of blood from your finger or your earlobe. You put this in the device to get a fairly accurate reading of your lactate data at that time. But to truly make the most of that data, first you do need to do a lactate profile test. The main testing method is done back home on your trainer, starting off at around 40% of what you think your current FTP might be. Basically making sure you start off easy. Then you increase the resistance or power you're putting down by 20 to 30 watts every five or eight minutes. And as each step increases, you take a lactate measurement to build up your lactate profile through that entire test. And you keep on going basically until you reach the point where you can't complete one step and get to exhaustion, which sounds pretty tough, but does provide some incredibly useful information. All that data will be put into our lactate profile, which looks at your lactate levels relative to your power. And this graph can be split into three separate zones, the first of which goes to your aerobic threshold or lactate threshold one. Below this, you're looking at your zone one, zone two riding, low steady state endurance, or even recovery riding. And if you want to know more about how you can utilize this zone to improve your performance, definitely check out a video that sided with Pagacha's coach, Inigo Sam Milan, who talked about all the benefits of zone two riding and what this does at a cellular level. 
Up to this point, your lactate levels have remained constant, but past it, they begin to rise relative to your effort. You're still using that aerobic system. This is the sort of place where you're doing those sweet spot, zone three style efforts. But then once you reach lactate threshold two or your anaerobic threshold, levels begin to rise exponentially and your effort has a shelf life and it's unsustainable. Lactate threshold two is essentially what your FTP is trying to find. It's closely related to your FTP number. Basically, it's the point at which you switch from your aerobic to your anaerobic system. So above it, you're looking at your VO2 max, your anaerobic capacity, or your neuromuscular power style efforts. For endurance athletes, raising these thresholds means the obvious knock-on, that you can push harder before you reach your limits. And proponents of Lactate testing so that you can then set truly accurate training zones. Exactly what sort of training you should do to improve is of course subject to debate, but one such approach that has used lactate testing to its advantage is the Norwegian method. The Norwegian method relies heavily on lactate testing. Made famous by Norwegian triathletes Gustav Eden and Christian Blumenfeldt, Olympic, Ironman, world champions in their discipline. They've used their own lactate data to their advantage. The method puts the bulk of a rider's training below lactate threshold one or their aerobic threshold, with key efforts done just below lactate threshold two or their anaerobic threshold and only a few times dipping above this at points in their overall training plan. Now, the theory behind this is that any time you do dip above that anaerobic threshold, you pay the price and you get a whole load of fatigue from it, but it takes a lot longer to recover from. Essentially, you take massive chunks out of yourself, which they argue might not be worth it. The key is that lactate testing is done also out on the road during their training rides. So they're basically using their lactate profile to, to understand their data. And then when they're doing certain efforts or those key workouts, they're bringing it right up to that anaerobic threshold, using that lactate testing at the side of the road after each specific interval to make sure that they're not dipping above that anaerobic threshold on that given day. And also making sure that they're pushing themselves hard enough, which removes the guesswork from working off a threshold style number whilst they're training, which can often fluctuate depending on the day to day. And this means they can push themselves harder, train more efficiently, get more bang for their buck, so to speak, and not build up as much fatigue over time, and they can train harder over a given period. There is a lot of really handy information that a little device like this can provide, but let's face it, it does come at the expense of time and cost. Plus, it does seem pretty extreme to stop on the side of the road on your training, on your training spin and start taking blood values every, every so often. But if you are prepared to go that extra mile, it can really make the difference and, and take your performance to the next level, providing a really fascinating insight into what your body's doing and potentially allow you to see where you're going wrong, where you can improve and take your riding to the next level. At the moment though, I don't think that lactate testing is a game changer or something that's gonna be seen as cycling's big thing. I think it's just too invasive at the moment, too timely, too costly to make that claim. But at the same time, there are brands out there that are claiming to make wearable tech, which incorporates this sort of technology. So you don't have to be doing the whole stopping, taking blood values as you go, and you can get your lactate readings on your wrist as you're riding. And if that claim is true and that tech starts to be rolled out more and more and we see that it's backed up by evidence, then that could be a real game changer. But until that point, I still think the improvements you can make by using just power and the theories and principles that are out there already will far better take you to the next level in your training, in your performance, than going out there and doing lactate testing. But I'm not taking anything away from it because I do think it really provides some accurate data and some good data that does provide an interesting snapshot into your riding and your performance. Either way though, let me know in the comment section below what you think if you've tried lactate testing or if you're thinking about giving it a go and what you might have learned from it. As always, always interested to hear your thoughts. If you did find this video useful, please give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.